Hello again there YouTube, this is Robert with another SolidWorks tutorial. Last time we talked about the draft, not the uh, NCAA draft, but part drafting for mold tools. Here we have the Lego example that we've been working on. Um, let's just look at draft analysis again. When you're making a mold tool, um, you want to make sure that you have drafted out all of your faces. That means that they go out in an angle, they're not perfectly vertical, otherwise your mold won't separate properly and you have a lot of troubles. So we're going to turn on draft analysis to just make sure that our part looks good. We're going to pick a direction of pull, which is perpendicular to this face, click OK, and just look at it. Anything that's yellow is not good enough. Right now we have a draft tolerance of one, per, uh, of one degree, so anything that is at or greater than one degree is good, anything less than one degree is not. And it looks pretty good. It looks like all of our faces are set. So, um, again, I don't like the colors being on all the time, so I'm going to turn draft analysis off, but we know that this thing's all set. Um, actually, I'm going to leave it on just for one bit longer, again, one degree, um, just to show something neat. If your part is fairly simple, and you're dealing with, um, and you've got your drafts all set up properly. When it comes time to set up your parting line, SolidWorks will probably do it automatically. So we're going to start with parting line, and we're going to pick and again direction of pull. Looks like that's up, and we're going to set, click on draft analysis, and it says the parting line is complete. Mold can be separated into core and cavity. It has already recognized the interface between the red and green areas and has highlighted this purple space as our, dra our uh, parting line. So we're going to click OK. And I'm going to turn off draft analysis. And you can see this blue line here that's been generated is our parting line. The parting line is where the two mold halves will be coming apart. Uh, shut off faces. Now we didn't do that before, so I'm actually going to roll back. I'm going to put a hole in the middle of my part. Not that you'd actually have something like this on this particular part, but you might have a hole in the middle of your part, and you'd want to know how to compensate for that, so we're just going to cut through. Okay, so now we've got a nice hole. Okay, which means we've got to put a draft on it. So we're going to go to our first draft feature, and we're going to add this face to the selections. Okay. Sorry about that. So let's roll this guy down again. Same spot. Perfect. Control Q forces a rebuild. Save our model. The reason why I put a hole on the part is because we want to do what's called uh, shutoff surfaces. Anytime that you've got a hole in the middle of your part, you're going to need a shutoff surface to tell the mold at which places the mold halves are going to be touching each other other than the outside of the part. So we're going to click on shutoff faces. And I hope you notice. Um, you kind of work from left to right here when you're making your mold tools. It's pretty nice. So, shut off faces. So, it recognized automatically where the hole was. It's usually pretty good. If it doesn't, you can use some uh, surfacing techniques to kind of tell it where the edges are. Um, but in this case, it found it automatically, which is really nice. So, you're just going to click the green check mark, and it's going to actually fill the hole with a surface across that loop. You can see it's covered up now can't see through it. And that'll be part of our mold. We'll see it later. The next thing that we need to do, okay, we just did shut off surfaces, so now we're going to do parting surface. The parting surface is the surface where the mold halves will be cut apart, and it basically just picks up your parting line automatically, and then um, creates the surface that comes off the edge of it. There are two ways to do smoothing. Um, in my model, you won't be able to see the difference because it doesn't have that, but you'll want to play with your settings to make sure that this, this parting surface comes out as flat as possible. So if it doesn't, you're going to have some problems. You have a few choices here, tangent to surface, normal to surface, perpendicular to pull. Um, perpendicular to pull is the one that I pick the most. Um, the big thing is, is that you want this thing to stick out a ways. Here we got our preview, and the reason for that is because it needs to cut off the body of your mold entirely. And so, I just extend it out to an unreasonable length, uh, just because that's that'll you, you'll you'll thank yourself for doing that later. So we're gonna click the green check. There is our parting surface. Alrighty. Next time we're gonna do the tooling split, and I'll show you how to do that, so that way you actually get two mold halves, and then. Uh, 
I'll show you how to explode that view so that way you can see the individual pieces. This has been Robert with your SolidWorks tutorials. If you have a suggestion or an idea of a video that you'd like me to make or if you need a clarification on uh, what we've talked about here today, please leave a comment down below or you can email me mudrock1221 at gmail.com. That's my official channel email and I'll be able to help you out there. Um, have a great day and view us again.